Hi, I'm Neil Peacock, and I'm demoing our PingPod 1000 uh, tablet here. And it's got it right now. It's up and running Linux. And as you can see, it's got a large 10-inch uh, LCD. Also, it's got a touchscreen, and that's working in Linux. Uh, it's got a number of ports on the side. We've got our uh, USB to go, which you can use with uh, an adapter to get regular USB. It's got a uh, full-size USB, SD card, uh, mini HDMI output, uh, charger plug, and a headphone jack. And this tablet also features a camera, and it has the G-Sensor too for rotation. Those are both features that we're hoping to complete with uh, the Kickstarter. And so, let's see. Show you a little bit here. So, uh, it's basically a standard... Uh, Android tablet, you know, that we've converted for Linux. It does have a gig of RAM on board. And hopefully I'll show up in the video. You can see we've got 800 megs free uh, between the operating system and some mini memory that uh, Linux is caching for the 3 hardware and the video driver. And uh, so that's basically this model. Okay, so now I'd like to show some of the internals and talk about the uh, ability to hack these devices and so this is the inside of our uh, ping pod 1000 here and over here we've got our serial header now this is great for debugging it's a little three pin serial header it's a TTL serial which you can convert with a USB to serial debugger lots of things will we'll do this like an FTDI cable and uh, that lets us watch the uboot process the kernel boot up gives you a serial terminal on the device even if the screen hasn't come up for you so it's really great for debugging and hacking and playing around uh, with these devices. And also, I just want to talk about the All Winner. Uh, because of the A10 processor's boot process, it's very easy to boot from the SD card because it just looks for that boot vector when it powers up. And if it sees a, a vector on that SD card, it'll go ahead and boot from the SD. Uh, now also, there's a, an a unrewritable section of the boot ROM that... Uh, will look at the USB as well and that way if you've basically bricked the device or you've got some some state that you can't recover from then you can reflash it using the live suite flash program and uh, an image of the, of the whole device and that ROM is always available because you, you can't write over that part of the memory and so basically no matter what you do software wise you should always be able to recover your ping pod back to a working state with that recovery ROM image and so that's one of the things that's great about the A10. You never have to worry about getting it stuck. This is our PingPod Melee. And uh, now it does look a lot like a standard Melee device you've seen around. Uh, these are available a few other places. Um, but basically we're going to guarantee the software support and we're hoping to get enough of them put together on this Kickstarter that we can buy a customized version with a gigabyte of RAM and hopefully uh, 8 gigabytes of flash and uh, basically get some upgrades in. Uh, so as you can see this device does uh, HDMI output uh, to a monitor. It's got a number of outputs actually. It's got uh, VGA, AV outputs, it's got a built-in Ethernet, uh, it's got a couple of USB, I think it's got three USB ports and we got our SD on the side which once again we're booting from and also uh, this one's got a uh, SD card slot it's more light there. And so, well, this is an SD card slot. This is a SATA drive as well. So, the SATA drive takes a two and a half inch uh, SATA drive, can basically pop right in there, or you can use the adapter cables to any kind of SATA drive and have yourself a full hard drive to share uh, with your system. Um, all right. Now you might notice on the screen here that we're having a little bit of uh, clipping there, things coming off the screen, and that's just a standard overscan uh, because this is actually a TV, this isn't an uh, HDMI monitor. And so you want to make sure that if you intend to use this with your screen that you have the ability to either turn off overscan or do a pixel to pixel mapping depending on the settings for your particular display. So this is our Ping Stick Mini PC. And I just want to point out how small it is right off. That's a three and a half inch and smaller uh, miniature A10 computer there. Now, it's got 
a uh, mini USB on the Go port. Uh, with, then it does come with an adapter for that. It's got a full size USB and it's got a power cable, uh, of course. Uh, it's got its SD card slot, which we're booting from right now. And it has a mini HDMI out, which we do have a cable with it, put it out to regular HDMI. And let's see, just to show you here, it'll output a full HD to a device here. And we'll go ahead and give it a mouse to use. And so there you go. So it's uh, also this one has the default background for Lenaro. We do use the Lenaro root file system as our standard one right now. And so it's got a lot of packages available for ARM. So there is a pretty good variety of software already ready to go with these systems uh, because of that. So again, this is our Ping Stick Mini PC. And like I say, it's our smallest PC. You can pretty much stick that in your pocket and take it anywhere. So this is our PingPod 700. This is our 7-inch tablet. Uh, so it's a little more portable, a little more compact. Uh, but it's also a little smaller. It's a couple fewer connectors. And so 7-inch screen. Uh, 800 by 480 resolution. Uh, it's got a USB to go port that comes with an adapter for a full size USB. So it'll run a hub and all still. Uh, it's got the mini HDMI, so it still outputs the screens, uh, power plug, and a headphone jack. Uh, it's got speakers built in, like the 1000 does. It's got the built in Wi Fi and all, so it's basically got most of the same features, just a little smaller, and of course, a smaller battery. Uh, 3.3 amp hour instead of the 6 amp hour of the 1000. And so those are our PingPod series of devices with the uh, A10 all winner processor. Uh, so they all share that same processor. And uh, we think they've got a lot of great features in Linux and we'd love to get those last little software features caught up to match up to the Android tablets. So we hope you'll take a look at our Kickstarter here and take a look at the products we have to offer and hopefully join us. Thanks.